Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu aleyküm. We begin uh, with the last uh, reading al 40 for so the 40 in the the 40 fundamentals of uh, of religion uh, an adapted translation of Imam Al-Ghazali Imam Al-Ghazali al for so the and uh, today we'll simply speak uh, about the uh, some differences, just simply to point out that it is an adapted uh, uh, summary, not an exact uh, abridgment of Ahiyarumidin, the revival of uh, Islamic sciences, the revival of the religious sciences, and the. Uh, uh, the translator is Nasser uh, Abdus Salam, Zalla Khairam. And the, uh, there is a foreword that we will uh, also uh, read, and the translator's uh, uh, notes. Uh, so we have, uh, and ultimately, Imam Ghazali's uh, uh, preface to the, uh, to the book. To point out, uh, first of all, to uh, uh, anyone who is uh, who is familiar with Hayy al Muddin, will notice that the arrangement in Hayy al Muddin that you have an introduction, you have the uh, Book of Knowledge, Kitab al Ilm, you have Qawad uh, al and then it moves uh, practically. Uh, into uh, Tahara, it moves into Salah, uh, Zakah, Saum, Hajj. Not that these are not mentioned in the uh, Arba'in. No, they are. Uh, they are mentioned, uh, but not in the first quarter, if you will. Uh, Imam Ghazali has uh, divided the book into four quarters. In each of them, there is there are uh, ten uh, chapters. Here is the same. We do have uh, four quarters in each. Uh, we have practically uh, uh, ten, uh, ten quarters. But the, the difference is that the, uh, the first quarter here uh, is practically about, uh, about Aqidah. It's practically about Aqidah. So uh, he moved, he moved the the uh, Tahar, uh, the Salah, the Psalm, the Hajj. He moved it uh, uh, to the second um, yeah, quarter, if you will. So this is really uh, a difference. So this is why. Uh, it is said that it is an adapted summary and not an exact summary. And of the ten uh, subtitles, ten chapters in the first quarter, practically about uh, uh, Islamic faith, uh, you will find that uh, directly uh, Eight of them are about uh, uh, about the essence, about the attributes uh, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and only number nine is about the uh, day of judgment, and the tenth is about the uh, prophecy. Uh, so this is an again, it, it does not uh, it does not follow, for example, the. Uh, Hadith Jibreel alayhi salam, uh, which would include, in addition to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief in his uh, in his angels, his books, the revealed books. Uh, so it's not this exactly the uh, the same, but at any rate, it would remain uh, an adapted summary. And Imam Ghazali permitted 
this is this book. Um, he said that, and we'll get to that, inshallah. That is uh, uh, originally uh, part of the Jews of the Quran, Jawahir Quran, but he permitted uh, publishing it, circulate to get really uh, on its own. The uh, first part of the uh, of the uh, English uh, rendition, really, of the translation, uh, and it is uh, this book was published by uh, Turath. So, uh, those of you who are not familiar with the uh, with Turath uh, publishing in uh, London, please do. Uh, accustom uh, yourself with the uh, with the books that they uh, they publish. The first uh, the forward the first part is by Abdul Rahman Ibn Yusuf uh, Manjera. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, indeed, uh, a prominent uh, a contemporary Muslim scholar. Uh, you can uh, listen to him. Uh, and speaking about uh, Imam Al Ghazali on YouTube, if you uh, would like to find uh, to find him, uh, you know, immediately. So we read uh, the uh, this forward, and we move on as much as uh, possible, inshallah. So he said, uh, "Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim." In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise is to Allah. Lord of the worlds who created mankind on the natural faith, Deen al Fatra, guided them through prophets, scriptures, and signs, divinely enabled the obedient and righteous among them to choose the way of salvation, promised them his pleasure, and prepared for them the eternal gardens. May Allah send his abundant blessings and peace on his messenger of mercy, Nabi Rahma, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and on his family and followers into limitless eternity. The human body, and we are still uh, reading uh, Manjira's foreword. The human body starts off as a limp lifeless and dark substance. Okay, so we talk practically about the zygote. And the three descriptions here, the three, uh, that is a limp, lifeless, and dark substance. The existent is either animate or inanimate. And uh, if you talk about stones, they are inanimate, lifeless. If you talk about the human being, the full grown-up human being, alive, that's exactly what we said, alive. In between, you have the, uh, even when the sperm is still a sperm, and the ovum is still an ovum, we cannot say that they are dead matter. They are not, you know, definitely they are not human beings, and the zygote in that moment of conception, uh, it is to be uh, respected, uh, but nevertheless, the first thing, the implication of limp, the uh, simply the choice of word, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, the the general use of uh, of limp is different from uh, it could be uh, described as uh, limp uh, in in the sense that uh, uh, maybe you can say one can stretch it to mean that it it cannot function on its own, or but it does. Uh, lifeless, it does have life. It's, there is no insolment yet, but there is life, so it's living and a living, living uh, organism. And then he said, dark substance. Here, I think it's a straightforward, uh, a straightforward uh, alternative uh, 
description uh, it is transparent rather than dark substance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala alam. When the, but he wanted this probably for the next uh, uh, for the next statement uh, to compare it as such the next statement or the next he talks about the insolment when the soul enters it enters this zygote this fertilized egg the body becomes alive and illuminated okay as do the five senses however the soul in its initial state is also dark and without awareness when bestowed with intellect it too becomes bright and illuminated similarly the intellect is also not complete in its illumination sharpness and purity until it it matures this occurs through recognition of its creator and his attributes knowledge of the states of souls and bodies and realizing the reality of the two worlds a gnosis which is our, which is achieved by means of the quran and divine revelation in other words the quran provides knowledge of the divine which illuminates the intellect the matured intellect then illuminates the soul which in turn illuminates the body and gives it life this book by the great sage and proof of Islam, Abu Hamid Muhammad al tusi al-Ghazali, died uh, in the year 505. This is the Hijri, uh, which is uh, circa 11.11. Details the nurturing of the ideal human being and his connection with his creator. He discusses the soul the states of servitude, obedience and disobedience, praiseworthy and blameworthy character, illumination and purification of the heart, success and salvation, and this transient world and the eternal abode of the afterlife. Many great individuals have passed through this world, but no, not all have left their mark on Islam as Imam al-Ghazali did. Today we speak about 2 billion Muslims approximately and the number uh, could really increase much more inshallah. One should, should ask herself, himself, you know, what should be basically my message, what should be my uh, uh, contribution, uh, how am I going to uh, affect. Many people say that when I graduated I thought I could change the world do attempt that because really this is the vocation of the prophets no matter what challenges you face for you it's the intention and inshallah you'll be rewarded for both the intention and the action and remember that since this is mentioned that the narrative there is an onslaught of uh, 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 disinformed and misinformed narrative about Islam, deliberate really. So much so that they talk about uh, there was no Mecca, there was no Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they would say there is no Muhammad. So how would, yeah, inshallah, will uh, respond to these for the uh, pre-Islamic poetry is uh, uh, full with references to Mecca and the neighborhoods in in Mecca. Uh, it's it's very easy to to respond, but I want I wanted to highlight the importance of uh, uh, working on narrative, regardless of the profession that you uh, choose. Inshallah, many great individuals have passed through this world, but not all have left their mark on Islam as Imam Ghazali did. In his student days, he was fortunate to have studied under one of the greatest scholars of his time, Imam Al Harmain Abdul Malik Al Juwaini. In Nishapur. This teacher recognized Imam Ghazali's outstanding intellectual gifts and used to say that Ghazali possessed encyclopedic knowledge, an ocean or a, a sea of, uh, of knowledge. Later, the student was uh, said to have surpassed his teacher, uh, Imam Ghazali, 
he was he was allowed he was permitted to teach during the time of uh, Imam Harim al Joini, which is a, not a small feat really at the time. So Imam al was not only recognized as an intellectual genius, but also became one of the most influential scholars of Sufism, having achieved probably the highest academic post in the Muslim world at the time as director of the Nizamiya College in Baghdad, of course established by Nizam al-Mulk, the wazir Nizam al-Mulk. Uh, the, the, of course there was a Abbasid Caliph, but there was uh, the uh, power, if you talk about the uh, real politics, the power was in the hands of the Seljuks uh, at the time. He, meaning Imam Ghazali, spent over a decade in solitary meditation and contemplation, probably 11, doesn't really make much difference. Uh, he spent over a decade in solitary meditation and contemplation, enjoying the bliss of spiritual visions. He could have remained in this state until the, his death, but God had destined for him otherwise. Ghazali saw the many challenges that the many challenges had confronted the Muslim Ummah. He observed that the faith of many was shaken, conviction had been lost, and religious practices had been reduced to lifeless forms. Of course, uh, probably, of course, uh, one would agree with uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Manjir that uh, uh, there's no need to uh, speak about all details, but maybe uh, the, uh, the reason why he left Baghdad and went uh, on, you know, to live this life of, uh, of seclusion the inner uh, struggle that he faced uh, in Baghdad, the two major uh, crises, maybe simply uh, alluding to this would have helped. And one would uh, say that uh, do uh, try to read about them in al Dalal, the deliverance from error. Uh, also translated as freedom and fulfillment. Now, once he realized the challenges, he says, I realized that I could easily remove their doubts. I saw myself, in fact, fully capable of exposing the hollowness and implausibility of their philosophical convictions because of my deep knowledge of these specula speculative sciences. I therefore felt an ardent desire to take up this work since it appeared to be the crying need of the time. I said to myself, how does it befit how does it befit you to sit in seclusion? It is an epidemic that is spreading like wildfire, like wildfire. And the land have themselves fallen victim to the same disease. The servants of Allah have reached the brink of destruction. He finally returned to teaching in 499, this time to the Nizamiya College in Isapur and took up his revival efforts, writing several enduring works. At this particular time, he returned to teaching uh, uh, in, in Nishapur at the request of Fakhr al-Mulk, son of Nidham al-Mulk, who was assassinated by the Batinites, the esoterics. Uh, and if you talk about that branch of the, uh, it is the uh, Neoplatonic, let's say, a branch of uh, you know the of that of that group, and they had uh, if you talk about the uh, the Sabaiya, the Kurramiya, uh, Khurramiya, uh, all of them uh, with minor differences. Uh, during the days of Imam Ghazali, they resorted to uh, a campaign of assassination, killing the. Uh, the Muslim uh, political leaders and also killing uh, scholars so that they could have the uh, the you know the uh, the common people if one might say this in terms of knowledge uh, readily uh, you know for for their uh, uh, ideology for their uh, thoughts so Imam Ghazali accepted the invitation of Akhmulk both Imam and the Mulk and Fakhr Mulk later on, both were killed at the hands of the, Bat the Batani. Uh, 
and after Nidam Mulk was, uh, I'm sorry, after Fakhr Mulk passed away, uh, after he was killed, Imam Ghazali uh, stopped teaching and returned to Tus Khurasan, and he divided his time between his students and his, uh, you know, the novices. So those who wanted uh, uh, classical fiqh, if you will, and those who wanted the revived notion of fiqh, the murids, the novices, the spiritual novices. Imam Razali is well known today for his literary legacy. Many of his spiritual works embody a sense of understanding and urgency that is hard to find in other works. He discusses issues in a very practical and holistic way, while all his advice and conclusions are based on their impact on the hereafter. On the hereafter. For a person of faith, there can be no other beneficial approach since any decision made uh, only for this world, as most decisions are, is limited to this world and cannot include the hereafter. In contrast, a decision made with the hereafter in mind must include this world, since all pass through it to reach the next world. One of the most celebrated works of Memor Ghazali is his magnum opus, Hiyaulam al Din, the revival of the religious sciences, Islamic sciences, that is, which he wrote on his return. I would stop for a second. Did Imam Azali write the revival of Islamic sciences on his return, or he wrote it during the 10-11 uh, years, or did he write it at Al-Aqsa Mosque? In fact, we don't have a straightforward answer, except that uh, that uh, when he says Rasal Qudsiya fi al-Aqaid, Rasal Bayt al-Maqdis also, we know that uh, and since he was also in seclusion, then it uh, makes sense that he used to write during this period. And especially that we talk about 11 years, 10, 11 years of his uh, adult life. Uh, so just think about it. Uh, he was uh, practically uh, still a student when Imam Joini passed away. And this, uh, this leaves him practically with uh, 15 years, well, maybe, six, maybe 16, 17 years before he passed away, Rahmullah, and he left this much. So he must have uh, he must have written continuously. And it is uh, written by one of his students that Imam Ghazali used to fill four copy books of, you know, every night. It means from his own uh, heft, uh, things that he memorized and uh, analyzing things and adding. So uh, it is doubtful that he stopped uh, writing during this uh, this period. Allah Alam. Readers of it will discover that the aims, that he aims at nothing, less than uh, nurturing a, a perfect slave of God, a worshipper, uh, a servant, and the genuine human personality. He tackles each topic in a comprehensive manner, weaving through the relevant Quranic verses, prophetic narrations, anecdotes and counsels from great sages, and employing his outstanding eloquence and psychological insight to get his points across. Um, the arrangement would be probably, of course, the uh, verses from the Quran and prophetic traditions, and then uh, the companions, then the tabi'in, then ulama and ubad and zuhad and Imam Ghazali takes no prisoners, he takes no prisoners, and fearlessly, meaning that he would uh, face face it as uh, in a very blunt, direct uh, uh, method, if you will, and fearlessly says things as they are, scholars, traders, the ruling elite and lay people are all addressed according to their frames of reference and relevant examples. In fact, Imam Ghazali mostly uh, 
uh, reprimands the scholars. The scholars, it means the scholars who have the knowledge did not apply it in their lives and they strayed from the uh, right path. So they come before anybody else. And he names them, not personal names, but he names them as a, uh, as, as a classification. Ghazali appears as an expert psychologist, sociologist, theologian, philosopher, religious preacher, and spiritual guide, all in one, just to uh, to make things a little bit more even complex. He was also an economist. He, and in fact, uh, there are certain parts of the Hia yeah, that uh, are uh, definitely uh, uh, comparable to. Uh, uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau's The Social uh, Contract and uh, there are certain parts that are comparable to uh, uh, René Descartes in his book uh, Meditation yes absolutely he did influence uh, western philosophers he theologians like Aquinas uh, so he had big, a big uh, impact even uh, and he's celebrated it. this is very uh, very uh, peculiar if they say Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah you talk about uh, conferences on Imam Ghazali like within within you know within my life they teach Ghazali everywhere but there are international conferences from Malaysia all the way to Zaytuna. Zaytuna, I'm talking about not Zaytuna in Tunis, the Zaytuna uh, College in uh, Berkeley, uh, California, Sheikh Hamza uh, Yusuf. And in between, near Chicago, they have uh, at uh, Elmhurst College, it's a Christian college, this one. And they have an annual uh, Ghazali uh, lecture. SubhanAllah. The idea is that there's great impact whether in writing or basically even on uh, even on uh, so we mentioned Aquinas but also Imam Ghazali uh, influenced uh, um, right rabbis also uh, they were influenced I, I think uh, the son of uh, of Maimonides in Cairo was influenced, but at any rate, uh, he well, he was translated also into into Hebrew. He was translated into Latin within within few years of his of his life. It's it's not really contested. His impact is not really contested. So Ghazali appears as an expert psychologist. Sociologist, theologian, philosopher, religious preacher, and spiritual guide, all in one. His words tugging at readers' heartstrings, beautifying their minds, and beckoning them to take up a life of piety and purify their souls before it is too late. Some of his accounts of ascetics and worshippers may appear extreme, and the number of uh, his uh, prescriptions may seem unattainable in the materialistic times we live in. However, they should not be arbit arbitrarily dismissed, for they serve the important purpose of shocking people into realization. In fact, Imam Ghazali does say this, that sometimes he goes into extreme the narrative so that he could, it's simply sending a message. It is shocking people, awakening people waking them from their intoxicated states and inspiring them to a life of steadfastness rather than a perilous existence on the edge of spiritual destruction. Then uh, it is mentioned here, a couple of uh, lines of, uh, of poetry uh, that they could be of uh, Sheikh Manjari himself since he does not... Uh, he said... Uh, it is the case that for a corner to be straightened, the paper has first to be folded in the opposite direction, which is true. Reverse. It's like having a U-turn on the highway. You make a mistake in choosing your, your path, the road. What do you do? 
you turn around, you turn around. The hair has been a continuous inspiration until present times and has been highly regarded by many of the author's admirers and detractors alike. Half of Zayn al-Din al-Iraqi considered, considered it, meaning the Hiya, the foremost literary composition of Islam. Muhammad uh, Ghazruni declared that were all the Islamic sciences to be completely effaced, like from the, they don't exist anymore, for whatever reason, he could revive them with the help of the Hiya, despite his differences with, with, with the Ghazali. The great historian and hadith master of Baghdad, Ibn al-Jawzi, acknowledged the popularity and matchless sincerity of the Ihya and wrote a summary of it, titled Minhaj al-Qasidin, Path of the Truth Seekers. Shibli Nu'mani said that every word in the Ihya possesses a magnetic effect on the reader. Ibn Taymiyyah stated that the Ihya contains many beneficial points despite his other criticism of it. And this should be uh, a clear message. Uh, there was a book that was published uh, more than uh, approximately uh, 30 years ago in uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, The uh, I don't want to mention the it's it's not my intention to uh, simply to uh, to attack specific person but the book was about Imam Ghazali the uh, the scholar who wrote uh, and he was not approving really but he was simply mentioning the scholar who wrote the foreword to the book mentioned that there are those in Saudi Arabia at at the time and of course even today. Uh, who uh, declared Imam Ghazali uh, kafir? And he, as I said, the the uh, uh, the that scholar in the foreword he laments uh, the uh, this uh, position. Um, those today who think that they are um, uh, definitely they even claim exclusive right to Islam, exclusive narrative. Uh, the uh, a monopoly on uh, on truth. They are uh, definitely uh, a reductionist in terms of their uh, knowledge, uh, unfair, biased. Uh, they they are in no position really to. Uh, they don't have the understanding. Uh, definitely not, and especially that uh, the you know that the author of the book continues to. Uh, mumble things on YouTube and what have you. Subhanallah. Notwithstanding this, the Ihya is large, is a large work spanning four volumes with ten detailed chapters in each. It incorporates nearly all that a person of faith needs for successful obedience in this world and salvation in the hereafter. Despite the near guaranteed effectiveness of the book, one of the obstacles in deriving benefit from it has been its length. Imam Ghazali perceived this and therefore penned a number of abridgments and adap adaptations of it, such as Kimya'i Sa'adat, that's the equivalent, uh, an abridgment, but in Persian really, the alchemy of happiness, happiness and uh, Bidayat al Hidayah, the beginning of guidance. However, it is the 40 principles, this particular book that inshallah will be reading, that appears to be the closest in format and theme to the Ihya. In the second section of uh, his uh, Jawah al-Quran, Jews of the Quran, Imam Ghazali presented a number of Quranic verses embodying various types of knowledge and practice. He then compiled an appendix and enumerate, to enumerate and elaborate in detail upon the objectives contained in this and those verses. He named this appendix Al-Arba'in Fi Usul al din the 40 principles of the religion, stating that it could stand as an independent book. In it, he 
covered many of the themes and subjects that are found in the Ihya and also arranged it in four major parts of ten chapters, each with an epilogue. However, it is difficult to call it a direct chapter for chapter abridgment of the Ihya since neither the contents nor the chapter order are entirely the same. Of course, this is not the um, you know the uh, abridgment or the different lengths. Uh, one might simply point to the al basit al wasit al wajiz as three books uh, in uh, uh, jurisprudence that, by design, Imam Al Ghazali uh, wrote about fiqh uh, Imam Al Shafi'i. Uh, the only difference is the how much he elaborated. The same thing about the uh, Aqidah. Imam Ghazali has different uh, uh, lengths deliberate by design. A partial English translation of this work was published several years ago. However, no complete translation appears to have existed. Therefore, Nasr Abdus Salam, the, meaning the translator here, is to be commended for undertaking the important and painstaking task of translating the entire work into English and to Rath Publishing for acquiring it and seeing it through the various editorial phases to publication, since this is a much smaller treatise than the Ihya, containing the essence of most of what is found there. It should allow more people to access Ghazali's spheres of wisdom and Inspire them to a life of divine love and obedience. Providence is from Allah alone. May He take He may He make this work a source of blessing for all, an inspiration towards common virtue, and a means of reinstilling humanity in people during these troubled times. Abdul Rahman Ibn Yusuf, Manjera, London, UK. Face of Rabi Al Awal, December 12, 2015. جزاهم الله خيرا شيخ منجيرا تراث ببلشينج دي ترانسليتر ناصر عبد السلام and of course إمام الغزالي and إن شاء الله all our علماء throughout Islamic history جزاهم الله عنا خير جزاء and إن شاء الله we will start tomorrow with the notes of the uh, translator the introduction the translator's introduction be the last gentleman subhanallah alhamdulillah nashadu nashadu la nastafiru bi tawfiq assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh